So go on then, Nisha. We're talking about llamas. My name's Carl. Just say it. <laughs> Carl? Carl? For farmers the world over, predation of their livestock by a wild animal is a recurring threat they're forced to deal with on a near daily basis. Or at least that's the case for farmers who haven't invested in what is apparently the latest in anti-wolf and coyote technology. A llama. So you'd think in the modern times, predators attacking farms wouldn't be a big issue? You wouldn't, would you? It's like, surely modern farming is basically just like a conveyor belt where animals go in and then like pre-packaged meat comes out the other end with a Tesco label on it. But no, that's not exactly the case. And according to studies that have been done on the predation of livestock, um, the numbers are quite startling. Uh, for example, there's one study from the USDA which says that some 11% of calves that are lost in the United States are lost to predators. And then there's another study that suggests anywhere from 5 to 9% of all lambs born in the West are also lost to predators. And admittedly, they are quite small numbers, but when you consider the sheer scale of livestock farming across the world, and especially in the West, um, that equals hundreds of thousands of animals being lost every single year. And it's noted that the numbers could be even higher than that because farmers don't tend to report when very young animals are killed, i.e. before they are tagged because they can't claim the insurance for them. So there's no reason to even bother reporting that they were killed. And this not only represents a huge monetary loss to those farmers and just the industry in general, but it's quite sad that these very young animals, because that's usually the animals that are targeted by predators, are being killed when they're only like a few days or weeks old. At least give them a little bit of a chance. It's like when you watch those nature documentaries and it's like, oh. yeah, these turtles are one second old and you just see like 50,000 seagulls attacking like, oh, yeah. come on, what, what, what chance do they have? They're like, they've just been born. Oh, it's like that. I can't remember which documentary it was. Um... Uh, Planet Earth. I know what you're talking about. It's the lizard that gets attacked by snakes. <laughs> one second old and you just see it like poke out of the sand and the moment, the moment <laughs> yes. it emerges from the sand, 50 snakes come out of like rocks. Yeah. And yeah. you just have like that, that hero moment as it's just like kicking snakes to death as it runs and just runs, just hauls the most amount of lizard ash you've ever seen. It has been alive for 30 seconds and it's got to fight 50 snakes. Oh God. It's like yeah. fucking hell. Like, there are days where I've not got out of bed because there's a spider by the door. <laughs> and you just look at those lizards and like, fucking hell, man. Oh, man. It's like, it happened the other day in my house. Well, I was just sat there in the other room. I just hear my girlfriend shout, Carl, there's a bat. What? And that's a, you never want to hear the words, there is a bat in the house. No. From the other room. And like, eventually it did fly out. But what my missus did not see is me in the other room picking up my badminton racket like, oh, I've got this. I fucking got this. I'm gonna go get that bat. So bringing it back to farmers, they mm. obviously want to reduce their livestock being killed. Yes. So what ways did they have to do this? Oh, there's, there's a few. You can put up fences, you can, you can shoot the predators. That's usually the most simple. Poison the predators. And the problem with those latter two is that you, you are killing the predator. And even if you don't give a shit about any of that, it's also very inefficient. So a, a better solution is needed, and that better solution apparently exists in the form of a llama. So what is it about llamas that makes them so good to prevent this? Uh, well, llamas are naturally territorial, and they will aggressively defend um, their territory uh, by biting, spitting, and kicking mm -hmm. at anything that enters their territory that they don't like. And when you couple this with another trait of the llamas, which is that they will accept any creature that looks like them into their herd, so like cattle, goats, sheep, that sort of thing, mm -hmm. um, they will act as a guardian for those creatures and will defend them aggressively from any outside threats. And in addition to all of that, llamas are naturally distrustful of canines. Like they don't like dogs, and they don't like things that look like dogs, which means they don't like wolves and they don't like coyotes. Yeah. And they will be on guard the moment they see one, uh, which combined with their highly acute sensors allow them to see a potential predator coming from a very long way away. That sounds awesome, but why would a llama be a threat to a coyote or a wolf? Yeah, that sounds kind of silly, doesn't it? Like, <laughs> yeah, Carl, they can see the predator coming, but what do they do when a wolf rocks up? The answer is they will kick it to death. 
Llamas weigh some 400 pounds and have very powerful hind and forelegs uh, that they can use to injure, if not outright kill, um, most predators <laughs> that are smaller than they are, including wolves. And there are stories of farmers who've adopted guard llamas, yes, that's what they're called, <laughs> walking out to survey their land and finding dead coyotes and wolves near their flocks of sheep and goats. And as if that wasn't reason enough to get a guard llama, on top of that, um, llamas will naturally and instinctively herd things like sheep, goats, and cattle to safety in inclement weather, and have even been observed lying down and protecting um, baby animals from the elements and from predators. Oh, it sounds really cute. I can imagine you'd feel really safe as well inside a fluffy llama. You would. Like, I don't think I can comprehend the level of comfort a newborn baby lamb would feel lying on the inside of a llama. Just like completely curled up inside, like the, the, the soft nuzzlingness of the llama, which is like, I'll protect you, my child. So warm, so fuzzy. And you know as well, if a coyote rocks up, the llama will kick it to death. And I'm assuming that as I'm talking, there'll be a fact by below detailing examples of things farmers have observed llamas doing to protect um, their newly founded herds. But I'm just really in love with the idea of just this stalwart protector of life, sort of just a fucking llama. Like you just look into a field and just see it. It's like this fuzzy sentinel of justice. Like I'll fucking kill anything that comes in. I, d I don't know why, but I can. I kind of like think about the Queen's Guards when I think of the llamas, especially with oh, the hats yeah. as well. I think they're kind of llama-like, if that makes sense. We well, you know what we can do <laughs> right now because I have the ability to create any image I want via Photoshop yes. magic. Let's Photoshop <laughs> a llama wearing a Queen's Guards hat to create <laughs> the tallest sentinel of fuzzy justice ever seen. And you know what, Nisha? Fuck it, we've not done a Photoshop in a while. So let's create the ultimate guard llama at the end of this video. But first, we have to discuss like other reasons getting a guard llama is such a good idea. Because on top of all the shit we've just talked about, um, llamas will also eat the same food that goats and sheep and cattle do. Meaning you don't have to buy the special feed. Oh. Um, because the alternative to a guard llama is like a guard dog, um, which needs different feed. Uh, you don't need that with a llama. Also, llamas live longer than dogs and they can live upwards of 20 years, uh, which can amount to about 10 years of active guard duty. <laughs> and for the especially cost-conscious farmer, it's noted that llamas can even get the same vaccinations that most livestock does as well. So you don't even need to pay for those. Just like put the llama in the queue alongside everything else and it'll be fine. They require almost no maintenance whatsoever. You just put a llama with some livestock, they will form a herd with them, and they will then protect them, and they'll eat the same food. Um, you don't even need to shear them. There's only certain species of llama that need to be sheared, and even then you only need to shear them once a year, if that. Um, if you get a llama that doesn't need to be sheared, you don't even need to do that shit, you just leave it. It's put it in the field and it'll take care of itself. So yeah, it's all well and good that llamas are pretty good bodyguards, but how much have they helped re like reduce predation? Uh, well, here's the thing, and it's almost unbelievable because some farmers have reported a complete reduction in predation of their livestock upon introducing a single llama to the flock or herd that they are taking care of. Farmers have gone from losing 10% of their livestock every year to 0% after getting one llama. Jesus. And this probably has people thinking, well, surely if one llama's that good, two llamas will be even better. And that's not the case because when you get more than one llama, they will form a herd with each other instead of with the livestock that you want them to protect. Oh. Meaning one llama is all you need. <laughs> and that's great, but to me, it's still not as impressive as the fact they can kick a coyote to death. So far away, Nisha, earlier in the video, we talked about creating, via Photoshop, the ultimate guard llama. So let's do that right now. So we'll start with a picture of a regular llama and put upon its head a Queen's Guard hat. And Nisha, what else do you think we can add to this llama to make it a better guardian? A llama's weapon are its feet. Are there any like really famous boots that we can give it, like some famously like mm. heavy boots? The boots that Isaac Clarke wears in Dead Space, the ones that let him, give him the 10 ton stomp. <laughs> Just a proper, yeah, let's give the llama them to assist it in stomping the fuck out of some coyotes. I feel like, as well, to complete the look with the hat, it could do with some, you know, like yes. the bouncers have, like the sunglasses and the earpiece. Just, just yeah, to have but that. I don't think it needs glasses. It does need the earpiece, but regular glasses, nah. It needs something better. It needs something to help turn it into the ultimate guardian. So is there anything you can wear to help, like, you know, just scout for danger? Like scout. Oh, I know. A scout from Dragon Ball. Yeah. A Dragon Ball scout. That yeah. way, no. 
if the wolf has a good power level or not, and it'll let it know how dangerous it is. Like, what about for protection then? I'll say some sort of armor. Yeah, like what armor should we give it? What armor do you stereotypically associate with like defense? Guarding. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking, there's got to be like an armor that's like, it's like the absolute ultimate. You know what? The Genji armor from Final Fantasy. So if I remember the description for it, the Genji armor from Final Fantasy, um, its description is it boasts the ultimate in defense. And I think the ultimate Lama Guardian is the ultimate armor. <laughs> <laughs> so it needs the Genji armor, and then, to stop back attacks, let's give it a Franklin badge from Smash Bros. <laughs> so it can't be back attacked or hit front with any projectiles. <laughs> and you know what? I think that llama's pretty fucking defensive. That's a, that's a tanky llama build right there. I won't fuck with it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go catch something in a field that's not guarded by the T-1000 of llamas. And feel free to turn that into fan arcs. That's fucking awesome. <laughs> oh yeah, that'd be amazing. The guard llama.